this is it. The penultimate episode. Like, I did still plan to make one more after this one, but it's proving to be relatively difficult to track down the lost VHS tapes and working out how to get them onto my computer, but I'll make it one day. And you're probably wondering how I'm doing all this with the paper, and let me tell you a little secret. It's magic. Just like my ability to transition from the intro into the video. The Lion King is a movie that came out in 1994, and they made two sequels. That's the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today. The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, Simba's Pride, Simba's Pride! Oh wow, that's a great title. Okay. Okay, so ever since I've started doing this series, I've just got incessant comments saying, you know, The Lion King 2 is actually good. This isn't like the other one, Seamus. It's better than the original. And I mean, okay, it's a stronger one for sure. Spoilers for the tier list later, I guess. But it's still a straight to home video sequel, guys. Like, let's not jump into dangerous territory of using words like good or better than the original. That's my favorite word. Like, we made a scale in the first episode and this isn't that bad. That's as far as I'm going, like, okay, here's how I'll put it. If you think The Lion King is just the be all or end all when it comes to movies, like just the greatest movie of all time, I can see why you like this movie. Like, the nostalgia levels are just... What was that noise? Like, it was as if they were writing the film and someone in the room was just like, so how much nostalgia do we want to put in here? And another person turned around and just goes, yes. You know, it opens with the exact same scene as the original, like, a shot-for-shot -shot redo of it, except it's Simba and Nala's child now, and the animation is significantly worse. They have a Circle of Life equivalent song, a Be Prepared rehash. Can you feel the love tonight? More like, love will find a way tonight. Mufasa in the clouds on three separate occasions. Simba has a weird nightmare about Mufasa's death, which is only there to remind you that that scene happened in the first film. Like, it doesn't serve an actual purpose in the story other than remember the Lion King? You love that film, now you've got to enjoy this one too. And I'm sorry to say it, but this film didn't massively stand out compared to the other Disney sequels. Like, I know the obvious comparison to make is to The Little Mermaid 2, where for a moment I genuinely thought these were going to be the exact same film, which to be fair, this came out two years before The Little Mermaid 2, so then that would have been ripping off this. But for comparison's sake, let me just show you the similarities. So the main character now has a child of their own, who is the actual main character in the film. And then the main villain is just a knockoff of the villain from the last film. And they have some sort of connection, whether that be a relative or a partner, and they're just out seeking revenge. Wakanda forever, I guess. So it's basically the same villain, just less interesting. And it turns out that the character you grew up loving learned nothing from the first film. They're just the parent now. As a matter of fact, they're their own parent. Like, they treat their child exactly how their parent treated them in the first film. What do you mean they could have learned from their parents' mistakes and that would have made for a better story? Do you think this is good writing or something? So yeah, Simba tells Kiara, his daughter, that the whole kingdom is hers and all of that circle of life stuff, except for this one part she should never go to. And she obviously goes to that one part. Does it sound familiar yet? And in doing so, meets Scar's son, except he's not actually Scar's son, like... Well, he is Scar's son, but just not by birth. I don't know, they also want him to be Kiara's love interest, so therefore, if he is actually Scar's son, that would be incest. And for that reason, they put in a few throwaway lines saying he isn't blood related to Scar, but then again, I feel like Kiara was kind of in love with him before she even knew, so... Yeah, it's pretty weird. But anyway, by this point, I was kind of on board with this just being the same film as The Little Mermaid 2, because like, that's still one of the better ones of the Disney sequels, and then just... Kind of randomly, it flashes forward 10, 15 years, 26 minutes into the film, and I'm still confused and flustered by it because it completely ruined the pacing of the story. And like, I'm okay with a film flashing forward. Like in the original Lion King, when they have that bit where they go over the branch and they all age a bit. That's one of the best scenes in the film because you can totally see the narrative purpose it serves. Like Scar is having his rule of terror and Simba needs to defeat him and reclaim his birthright, but He's a little small, so they have to age him up a bit and make him older and stronger before he does that. So they do right before the final act. And I assume this film is trying to do the same thing, except with Kovu, who needs to be older and stronger to take on Simba. But they do it weirdly early, but also too late at the same time. Meaning most of the film is then spent with an older Kovu and Kiara, leaving this feeling like a 26 minute long flashback scene. Yeah, that, 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 that's what it is. It's a 26 minute long flashback scene. Which again, opening a film with a flashback scene can be effective if it has a good narrative purpose, but 
26 minutes. I get why they did it. They basically wanted to remake The Lion King's opening scenes with Simba and his kid, and they did that as I've covered, but because of how long it all went on for, it does have the rest of the film being squashed into like 50 minutes and the pacing is such a mess. However, with that all said, it was fun. It was a fun little story. Yeah? It does what a lot of these sequels love to do and just follow a very stereotypical romantic storyline where the bad guys set up one of their own with a good guy, you know, to try and infiltrate them. In this case, Kovu saves Kiara from a jungle fire that they started. And then Simba, feeling like he owes Kovu, lets him join his pride. You get it? He joins Simba's pride. That that's the title. Then when he starts spending time with Kiara, has that moment of realization of wait. Are we the baddies? And honestly, to demonstrate just how rushed it is, there is literally less than three minutes between him planning on pouncing and killing Simba and him being unbrainwashed. And I'm not talking about some sort of three minute montage here. This is literally three minutes in film time. Like it's just one continuous scene with Kovu, Kiara, Timon and Pumba, where, you know, they play it off with the classic bad guy who's never had fun in their life and is confused by the idea that they're allowed to have fun. What? This is just for fun! Fun? I don't know specifically where else that's done, but it's definitely a cliche. <laughs> then of course, in classic romantic film style, it's revealed to Simba that Kovu only saved Kiara to get to him and kill him and has actually been evil this entire time, even though that's not true. And when he manages to escape and get back to his pride to tell them what happens, Kiara just doesn't believe him because she knows Kovu better than he does after that one day where she fell in love with him. So Simba gets mad at her telling her she can never leave Pride Rock again because that's totally the kind of thing it'd do. But because this film's super rushed, she escapes Pride Rock like 15 seconds after this conversation happens and reunites with Kovu. Then this film finally concludes with Simba's tribe and the outsiders having a big fight. And just as Simba's about to die, Kovu and Kiara show up and Kiara just simply says, Look at them, they are us. What differences do you see? And that somehow resolves all the disputes and divides over Scar with everyone just agreeing to get along from this point onwards. You know, other than the one evil lion, but she falls off a cliff into water and dies. Splash! Like, it's a shame because I feel like this film could have actually been good if they cut down the flashback to like five or ten minutes and then spent the film focusing and fleshing out Kiara and Kobu's relationship. But all in all, with these films, having fan service is more important than a good story and you know what, that might as well just be the motto for Disney sequels. And for most people, that seemed to work for this one because everyone seems convinced that it was actually good. And maybe it is, and I'm just wrong. That's probably likely, but I guess that means unpopular opinion, but this film's like 5.3 out of 10, which I guess means it's fourth on the list. Yeah. Lion King Free, except this isn't actually called Lion King Free, it's actually the Lion King. 12? Can you imagine if they actually made 12 Lion King films? That would be a lot of Lion King films. Sorry, this is actually Lion King one and a half. So, wow. That's my one red review of this film. Just wow. Lion King one and a half did something I wasn't sure was possible. It surprised me. I mean that in the sense that these films are so formulaic and just do the same thing in my opinion and I feel like throughout this series I've been trying to do ongoing jokes that kind of parody this repetition whether it be Disney sequel fake out deaths or guess what happened in this predictable Disney sequel or the nightmare organ and this was the first one to really do something different with a really fourth wall breaky story. That's the professional terminology, I think. Like, the film opens with Timon and Pumbaa fast-forwarding and rewinding through the original Lion King as a way to set up for this solo story, which is all about Timon and his life as a meerkat and how he didn't fit in, so he set out to find himself and ended up finding Pumbaa, and it's an okay little origin story. Now, at first I thought that whole rewinding, fast-forwarding thing was just gonna be a bit, but... Boy was I wrong. They just keep pausing it throughout, which I guess is in there to like give off an effect that they're watching the film with you and it's all just very self-aware, which kind of creates a problem for me making this video because any joke I want to make, they've already made it. I'm out here ready to nitpick, so you're really telling me Timon and Pumbaa were present for every important event from The Lion King? Yep. They've already made a joke about the it. story within the story. Because what they don't know is how we really were there, even though they didn't know we were there. Okay, but surely the meerkats needing to live underground to hide away from the hyenas defeats the point of the circle of life, right? Nope. Beat me to it. Again. But when they die, they become the grass. 
And we eat the grass, right? Not exactly. We can't digest grass. Oh my god, seriously, what are the chances of Timon just running into Rafiki conveniently? Yep, they made a joke about that too. How convenient. And like, that's not even the half of it. There's literally a moment where Timon's uncle is about to get killed by a hyena and Pumbaa sits on the remote. And yet yeah, this actually happens. They just start playing some teleshopping and like, I, I honestly couldn't take my eyes off it. I was in genuine shock. Like, I think this might be just the definitive best way to go about making a film like this because there's always a fear in the back of my mind when they make a spin-off around the comic relief characters that it might end up, you know, Cars 2. So the self-aware route was effective on that front, but that doesn't mean there weren't shades of Cars 2 all over this. You see, the other major fear I had with a film revolving around these two main characters was that it was going to be filled with burps and farts and fat jokes, you know, all that sort of comedy. And I was so prepared for this that when I started making notes while watching the film, because, you know, that's how I prepare for these videos, the first thing I wrote down and did was make a spreadsheet for all of the time codes for the jokes that come under that category. And then... To my surprise, up until this moment when he met Pumba, there hadn't been a single one in the entire film. Which was also the moment when I realized, oh yeah, all of the jokes revolve around Pumba, don't they? And oh man, there's a lot. I honestly think I could take you through the film only going through moments where one of these jokes are made. And actually, no, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Timon calls Pumba fat while they're heading to the lifting of Simba thing. Does anyone know what that's actually called? Just, ah, Svenja. <laughs> I think I need to delete myself. Well, yeah, Rafiki tells Timon to go to that, and while they're there, Pumba has such a big fart that everyone around him starts to pass out, and apparently that's the reason everyone starts bowing uh, to Simba, like, when the Ah, uh, Svenja thing is happening. <laughs> anyway, so after that, they start searching for their dream home in the jungle, and the first place they settle down in has these two beds, and you get it? Timon is in the big bed, and... Pumba's in the small bear. It's funny because he's fat. By the way, don't tell anyone, but it wasn't really very funny. However, with each new place they find, new problems start to arise, all of which line up with the events of the original, of course, and a great example of this is this canyon they find where they block it off with Pumba's butt for, like, five seconds, and then they get chased off by the stampede. You know, the stampede from the first one. You know it. With that said, though, the callbacks to the original film in this one make a lot more sense because it actually takes place during the original film, and... I feel like that's also kind of the point because it's supposed to be the self-aware film showing what they were doing during that and yeah, it works much better than The Lion King 2 for these nostalgic things. Still continuing their search for a new home, they end up falling down a waterfall Disney sequel. Nope, they paused it because Pumba needs a toilet break. Guys, I wish I was joking, but the next minute of the film is literally just overly graphic sound effects of Pumba on the toilet while Timon's waiting for him and the film's on pause, like... It definitely did something different! <laughs> then they finally find their dream home, you know, the one they're living in in the original, and coin the term Hakuna Matata while also coming up with the song just on the spot. And in this film, they turn it into a sing-along by fraying a ladybird over the words, like a classic sing-along, and then Pumba, during the song, eats the ladybird, showing you what words you're supposed to sing, and... Then they find Simba and decide to raise him as their own, which obviously, that's in The Lion King, but this film shows the parenthood part, which... Honestly, it mostly consists of Simba needing to go to the toilet, and them crossing the tree to take Simba to the toilet, and then going back, and then... Uh, yeah. Then as the film starts to take us through the years they all spent together as a free, there's just a lot and yeah, some honourable mentions are a snail eating contest they have because yep, that is something. And there's this scene in a bubbly jacuzzi where you can see where the joke's coming from, right? Like, just give it a sec. Yep, ha <laughs> ha, he was farting. Then we finally reach the end of the film where Simba takes on Scar and Timon and Pumba run into his meerkat family from the start, and they all team up to take on the hyenas because, you know, that's kind of nice symmetry. They were, like, having that whole thing at the start, and now they team on. And there weren't really any fart jokes, so, you know, it stuck the landing. I'll give it credit. And just when I thought the film was done, baffling me, we return to Timon and Pumba watching the film, and everyone just starts to show up, telling them to watch the film from the start, and 
By everyone, I mean everyone. Like, you thought Ralph Breaks the Internet was the big Disney crossover? Lion King 3 did it like 15 years earlier and I don't know what's going on! But with that said, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like how this film did something different and went in a very self-aware route compared to the other Disney sequels. And like, I guess it goes one of two ways. You either really liked it or you finished watching it and think that was the most stupid thing I've ever seen. And I'm gonna be honest, I fall into the former and I might be about to break my one rule here and say this was actually kinda Good. Okay, it wasn't quite good. My scale remains intact, but I will say it was the first one I actively enjoyed watching. So for that reason, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Yes, this is the best one. And I mean, since we're reaching the end of this series, I'm gonna say this is the best Disney Renaissance sequel. And I guess with that, we've reached the end. I can't believe there's only one more episode left in this series. Like, it's an emotional time if I'm honest with you, but like, it doesn't have to be completely done. If you want to see me keep making these videos, make sure to leave a like and I'll do like Cinderella and Fox and the Hound and all those other Disney sequels in the future. But for now, special thank you to Maddie, Chase, Zach, Peter, Ali, Christina, Yuhan, Jacob, Sophie, Matt, Mots, Rachel, Jada, Veronica, Jonathan, Ben, Catherine and Amanda for supporting me on Patreon. If you also want to see your name here, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Seamus Gorman linked in the description down below. Oh my god, my voice is going. And yeah, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can watch another Disney sequels video by clicking here. You can check out the Patreon I just mentioned here and in the description down below. I think I've already said that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. I only said thanks for watching once that time. I'm certain of it. Right?